Honestly, I wish someone would have told you what I'm about to tell you right now. It would have saved me a lot of time, effort, and mental energy if I had known when I started. So, you just graduated with your engineering degree and you're ready to take on the world. Congratulations! But before you go off and make the same mistakes that everyone else does, I want to share with you some advice of someone who's been there before. In this video, I am going to list 18 common mistakes that junior engineers make so you can avoid them altogether. But don't worry, because by subscribing to this channel and watching the weekly videos that I'm uploading, you can gain powerful insights into how to best enter the world of engineering as a professional. I'll teach you everything from mastering your first job, having one-on-ones with people and networking with your peers, so you succeed in the career path that you choose. So let's get started, 18 things that hold junior engineers back. Number one, they don't come prepared in meetings. I did a separate video on this actually, so if you're curious, check that out. But oftentimes new grad join one-on-one -on -one meetings and have no idea what to do. This is a very, very poor practice because you wanna make sure that you take advantage of the time you have with the other person. Number two, they don't know how to make mentorship work for them. Maybe you have a mentor already. If not, you should really ask your manager to get you a mentor. But even if you do, many new grads don't know how to take advantage of the mentorship opportunities that they have. So understanding how your mentor can help you and set goals with your mentor will impact you a lot in your career. Number three, they don't build trust early enough with the senior engineers on the team. You have a bunch of people on your team and the senior engineers are the ones that you should make your friends today. Get them to feel comfortable to share critical feedback with you because you wanna grow in your career. Also, they're often the ones that can help you if you're really blocked on something or if you have no idea how to tackle a problem. So just being on good terms with them, making sure that they prioritize you when you have questions is incredibly important. Number four, they're not honest with their managers. When I started as a new grad, I thought my manager has to have this perfect view of how I am as an engineer. But that's not true because your manager wants to know when you're blocked. It's actually in your favor if your manager knows when something is not going well. Why? Because they're the ones that can help you get out of it. Number five, they don't focus enough on reliability. I make it my personal mission to teach every single new grad that joins my team that reliability is a core piece of software engineering. You want to make sure that you write high quality software. Number six, they don't ask for help when they don't know how to do something. Often I see a new grad struggle with this because they think they're supposed to figure it out themselves. That's true. At some point we have the expectation that you know how to figure it out yourself, but you're new. You don't know how your code base works yet. So don't shy away from asking people to help you. Number seven, taking on too many tasks at once. I get it. You joined out of college and in college you had a bunch of classes with a bunch of homework. You can't just say no to this homework. You have to do it. So you go home, you work on the homework until it's 2 a.m. You go to bed, you sleep for four hours and then the same thing happens again on the next day. At work, this is very different because we don't want you to burn out. So it's critical for you to say no at times. It's critical to tell your manager, hello manager, I have five tasks already. Do you want me to do the sixth task? Often the manager will then guide you to prioritize all of the tasks that you have and make sure you work on the most impactful thing, but you really need to learn how to say no. Number eight, forgetting to document your work. This is not just good for you, but also good for your team. I think big tech companies don't document their code enough and it'll probably backfire when you work on the same team again in two years because there may be code changes and after two years, I can assure you, you forgot how that code works. So you wanna make sure that it's well documented. Investing a little bit of time. I'm not gonna tell you to document your code for an entire week. The rule of thumb that I like to use is if you document your time with 10% of the time that you use for the entire code, that's probably a good amount of effort. Number nine, assuming that you already know everything. I know you join out of college and you've taken this amazing machine learning class and you're all fire and flame on artificial intelligence. But let me tell you, this is not how it works at big tech companies. You will work with experts in the field, experts that have worked there for three years. You don't know everything. I'm sorry to humble you here, but you have to be open for the knowledge that you will learn in the next couple of years. So don't be that guy. <laughs> Number 10. They have bad test plans. Test plans on your code reviews are incredibly important. I'm mentioning this because often I see new grads going in and say, oh, I'll just test this in production. Like, no, you're not gonna test this in production. You have to have a solid test plan. Number 11, they forget about logging. Logging is important also when your product breaks. I'll give you an example. Let's say you work at Twitter, you have the tweet button and the tweet button breaks. 
Like suddenly all the tweets, they don't show up anymore. Good logging will help you here. In this example, you would have a log for tweet button is getting rendered. Tweet button has been rendered. Tweet button is showing up. User sees the tweet button. User clicks on the tweet button. Request for the tweet has been sent. And then the request comes back with either a success or an error. If you have this sort of logging, you can easily figure out where this is failing. Number 12, they're not investing in automated testing enough. You don't just wanna understand when your software breaks. You also wanna understand when somebody else breaks your software. There's tons of people working on the same code base as you. And it's very, very likely that there's someone out there that's interfering with your code and breaks it. With an automated test, a unit test, an integration test, etc., you can make sure that your software has a little bit of a higher quality. Number 13, they're not following up fast enough in code reviews. Say you've worked on a project for the whole week and you have a stack of five different commits. You send it out to your senior engineers, your senior engineers read it, they give you feedback on it and make comments. Now it's up to you to actually implement those changes because your code is not gonna be perfect first time. I oftentimes see new grads struggle with communicating with those engineers on those code reviews. Even if you see a comment and you agree with it, you have to react to it and say, okay, this makes sense to me. Or no, this doesn't make sense to me. And then you have a discussion. Number 14, they don't review their team's code themselves. I know you're new and you're probably thinking, oh, I have no idea what they're all doing, but this is a prime opportunity for you to grow. I always tell new grads, go into the team's code base, see the commits that people are writing and ask questions. I don't expect junior engineers to do a full on code review with high quality comments right away, but I do expect them to contribute to it and ask the questions that they need to understand what's happening. Number 15, reacting negatively when someone offers constructive feedback, especially in code reviews. It's not uncommon to get defensive when receiving constructive feedback, but understanding that this is contributing to your growth will be incredibly important for you in your career. Number 16, judging people based on their job title. At tech companies in general, job titles are a thing, yes, but it's very normal in software teams that lots of people contribute to the strategy of the team or to the success of it. I'll give you an example. I was once working with a product designer. What you do as a product designer is you work on the UI pieces that your product needs. However, that product designer was incredibly talented with strategy and gave a lot of strategic pieces on how the product should evolve in the future, etc. I didn't hold that designer accountable just based on their job title. This is how tech companies work. So just because someone is not an engineer or someone is not a product manager, doesn't mean they cannot offer good feedback or good insights for a product. Number 17, expecting promotions and raises right off the bat. I have seen so many new grads that join a company and say, I want to get to a senior engineering level within a year. That's a great goal, but it's probably not gonna happen. It actually just happens to like a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of the company, I can assure you. And this is a bad goal for yourself because you don't even know what it takes to be a senior engineer. If you take away anything from this video, do not, and I'm repeating, do not have this conversation with your manager in your first meeting saying, how can I get to this and this level in a year? Don't do this. First, you understand how your code base works. Then you understand how your team works. Then you understand your contribution to that and what the gaps are. Then you have a conversation about it. So instead, you want to focus on all the gaps that you have. So work on those things. Work on the growth plan for you. Work on understanding what you don't do well and do it better. And the last tip for this video, neglecting your personal life. This is such a big issue for so many new grads out there because in college, I get it. You are in a big class with a ton of other students. All of your friends are in the same position. All you do every single day, every single night, on the weekend, you study, you work on homework and you try to improve. But a full-time job is not a sprint. It's not just a four-year degree. You're there for the long run. You're there for probably 10, 20, 30 years. So you cannot risk getting burnt out from what you do. Invest in your hobbies. Try to figure out what you actually wanna do when you close your laptop at night because you don't want to get burned out just after two years. Okay, that's it. 18 common mistakes that junior engineers make in their first job. If you think this helped you, please comment. Please let me know. I'm very excited to hear feedback from you because this channel is still very new. And don't forget to subscribe.